Hello my fellow friends of terrain building and welcome to another Middle Earth terrain building tutorial. Today I want to show you how to build such a Harad house or instead one could rather call this a palace of Harad or even Suladan's palace. Equipped with the techniques presented you can also build any other desert house in the same style. Simultaneously I'll show you a few ideas on how to make the palace or other buildings look even better and maybe you can copy over some of the techniques shown to your own terrain building. With that said, have fun and let's start with the tutorial. Let's start with the construction of the main building. For this, I wanted a square foundation block of the building that is uh, the floor plan. And here I choose 20 centimeters. The first block um, has a width of 20 centimeters, the usual six centimeter height that you get with the styrofoam block. And now it has a depth of 10 centimeters. Uh, personally, I have built myself such a structure, which always has the next tip of wooden stake after one centimeters, so that one can fastly carve a wall structure on my walls with this technique. You just pull it along and get even horizontal lines. And then you only have to scribe the vertical lines themselves. I have now always cut off a slice here, then scribed again, cut off another slice, scribed again, and so on. Eventually, I have eight such wall parts and some styrofoam is even left over. The next steps are to carve doors and windows. These are carved or pressed in and then burned out with the hot wire cutter. The angle cutter is used um, to cut 45 degree angles and to ensure that the wall parts in the end can be glued together. You'll see some of these steps in time lapse now, and we shall come back afterwards.
So after a few time-lapse sessions and some working hours later, the palace looks like this now. I haven't shown you all the steps, but some of them are practically identical. I have now glued the plates as floors here. Because the hot wire cutter can cut more than 14 to 15 centimeters in height, I glued on single pieces and not just one continuous piece. These single pieces have six centimeters in width each. I cut the recesses so that the panels protrude slightly from the wall width again. I glued the two floors on top of uh, each other and the towers are not fixed yet because there's still a railing that will be adapted to the two towers. Something else I haven't shown you because it's not too exciting are the further carvings to the stone structure. It's best to do it before you glue the walls together, which is something I forgot here. And it works also after gluing them, but before is definitely easier because you can put the individual pieces flat on the table. For the railings, I have already cut one 20 centimeter long piece with one centimeter in thickness and two centimeters of height. I like these dimensions quite well in the scale. These are then cut with such a template to avoid ubiquitously the same height, but rather obtain some variety in it. With the angle cutter, 45 degrees are then cut in again and glued together. The same process is done on the small balconies at the bottom. Already, we would now come to the finishing touches of the palace, but first let's dive into time lapse to witness the announced steps. As you can see, the palace now has three domes, two pieces on the towers and a large one in the middle. In addition, the palace has been structured with a stone. Now comes a penultimate optical highlight as decoration. Two wooden spheres are glued on top of each other on the corners of the towers, as well as on the four corners of the main railing, the smaller one on top of the larger one, such that a kind of sculpture is created and should offer an optical variety. I will glue these 12 ball towers off cam. I'm sure it's not too exciting. And then next, I will show you how the palace looks once it's been primed and brushed. In the meantime, the palace has been primed in an ochre yellow and then dry brushed with a lightened base color. The windows and doors have been painted brown and very gently dry brushed white. This is what the palace then looks for now. The next step is two mumak tusks that will stand next to the entrance door and serve as the foundation of a canopy in front of the door. This will create a nice awning in front of the door. And the next step is that. Um, so this is the next step and then the awning still has to be painted. And with that, the palace has been finished. Mm -hmm. 